Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so last week I finally got around to taking a look at GPU scaling performance with the Ryzen 3 3300X, comparing it with the Ryzen 5 2600 and 3600 using a range of GPUs. And it was a pretty interesting look at AMD's quad-core Ryzen 3 processor, and a lot of you really seem to enjoy these GPU scaling benchmarks, so I've decided I'm going to do a lot more of them over the coming weeks and months. I've also received an overwhelming amount of requests to add the Ryzen 5 3500X and Ryzen 5 1600 AF to the data, so I set about doing that just hours after the video went live. However, I wasn't really satisfied with trying to add those CPUs to the older data set, so I decided to overhaul the test setup and throw all the old data out and make way for the new. Some of these changes include the move from 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory to 32 gigabytes with four modules for dual rank operation. And I've also added two more games to the list while dropping the 1440p testing. I felt removing the 1440p resolution from the testing in favor of a few more games was the right move given that the increased resolution didn't add too much to the data. The fact that we're using four different classes of GPUs has us pretty well covered on the scaling front, so no real need to add additional resolutions. Of course, the more data the better, but there's also a limit to how many benchmark runs even I can handle, and I made around 600 of them just to create this video. The other key changes see us move away from mixing GeForce and Radeon GPUs, which can create a bit of confusion in the data due to things like the varying degrees of driver overhead. So I've dropped the Radeon RX 5700 and RX 580, replacing them with the RTX 2060 and GTX 1650 Super. I know this will upset some AMD fans, but really it shouldn't. We know how the competing Radeon GPUs compare. The RX 580, for example, will be comparable with what we're going to see from the 1650 Super and the RX 5700 with the RTX 2060. And yeah, the AMD GPU is a bit faster, but you'll get the idea. As for the test system, I'm using the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master Motherboard using the latest F12G BIOS, 32GB of G-Skills Flarex DDR4-3200CL14 memory, and the Corsair H115i Pro all-in-one liquid cooler. Auto overclocking features such as PBO are disabled. In fact, the only alteration made in the BIOS sees XMP enabled. I'm also using the latest 2004 build for Windows 10, and this is actually the first round of testing I've done with this Windows version. Okay, enough about all that, let's get into the graphs. For testing Far Cry New Dawn, I'm once again not using the built-in benchmark, but I have moved to a slightly more demanding section of the single player campaign. Not really a big change here in terms of the numbers, but it is worth mentioning. Starting with the 1080p normal quality preset, which is basically the medium quality preset, we find that the game is extremely CPU limited, at least when using these Ryzen CPUs. Of course, we know Far Cry New Dawn to be a game that doesn't play particularly well with Ryzen CPUs. I mean, the game plays just fine with frame rates often in excess of 100 FPS, but you'll be looking at around 25% more frames with an equivalent Intel processor. Anyway, we see very similar results with the RTX 2080 Ti, RTX 2070 Super, and RTX 2060, as the game is very much CPU limited in all three scenarios. It's not until we drop down to the GTX 1650 Super that the game becomes GPU limited. That being the case, let's just focus on the RTX 2080 Ti results. Here we see that the 3300X is up to 9% slower than the 3500X and 11% slower than the 3600, though it is up to 15% faster than the 1600 AF. Now, if we increase the quality preset to Ultra, a few interesting things happen. As we've seen in the past, the game becomes not just more demanding on the GPU, but also the CPU, and here we see that disabling SMT is advantageous as the 3500X delivered quite a substantial performance uplift over the Ryzen 5 3600. So that's interesting, especially given that the 3300X is now not that much slower than the 3600 in terms of performance. We're also seeing virtually identical results with the RTX 2080 Ti and 2070 Super, as the game's still very much CPU limited at 1080p. In fact, using these CPUs, the 2080 Ti would really need to be tested at 4K to show any noteworthy performance advantage over the 2070 Super. This time we see that the 3600, 3500X and 3300X all deliver the same performance with the RTX 2060 as all were limited by the GPU. The 1600 AF though still does trail by quite a substantial margin and it's not until we drop down to the GTX 1650 Super that we see the margins erode entirely. Moving on to the Rainbow Six Siege results, this time using the new built-in benchmark. Typically we do shy away from canned benchmarks, but this one seems to do a pretty good job of representing actual gameplay, and it is highly accurate in its repeatability, so we're going to give it a shot for now. 
Using the medium quality preset with the rendering scale set to 100%, we see that the Ryzen 5 3600, 3500X and Ryzen 3 3300X all are very evenly matched, even with the RTX 2080 Ti. The 1600AF lags behind, giving the 3300X a 17% performance advantage when looking at the average frame rate. However, by the time we drop down to the RTX 2070 Super, there's little to no performance difference between these CPUs. We're talking about a 3% deviation here. That figure is reduced to just 2% with the RTX 2060, and then 0% with the GTX 1650 Super. And increasing the quality preset to Ultra doesn't really have a huge impact on frame rates, and therefore the margins seen previously are repeated once again here. Basically, all four CPUs are capable of driving over 250 FPS at all times. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a very CPU demanding title, and for this one we're testing in a demanding section that can be found around 4 hours into the campaign, and it's the same section used in all our recent 10th gen core series reviews. Here we're seeing a reasonably large performance uplift when moving from the 3300X to the 3600, as the 6 core 12 thread processor was up to 16% faster. And this margin is also seen when testing with both the RTX 2080 Ti and RTX 2070 Super. Interestingly, the Ryzen 5 3500X, Ryzen 3 3300X, and even the Ryzen 5 1600 AF all deliver very similar performance when using the RTX 2080 Ti, RTX 2070 Super, and RTX 2060. It wasn't actually until we dropped down to the RTX 2060 that we started to see the 3300X, 3500X, and 1600 AF really catch up to the 3600. And this is of course possible due to the GPU bottleneck. Then, as you'd expect, we see when using the GTX 1650 Super that all four CPUs delivered the same level of performance as they're now heavily GPU bound under these test conditions. Now, increasing the visual quality settings to the highest quality preset, we see that the 3600 is up to 23% faster than the 3300X when using the RTX 2080 Ti. That margin erodes to 15% with the RTX 2070 Super and then just 4% with the RTX 2060. Again, we're seeing virtually identical performance across the board when using the RTX 2060 and GTX 1650 Super. Gears Tactics is another CPU demanding game, and here we see when using the medium quality settings at 1080p that we're running into a pretty strong CPU bottleneck. That said, the game clearly isn't fully utilising the Ryzen 5 3600 as it's no faster than the 3300X, but the improvements made with the third gen Ryzen architecture are clearly evident given the 3300X is up to 36% faster than the 1600AF, and that kind of margin can be seen with not just the RTX 2080 Ti, but also the RTX 2070 Super and even the RTX 2060. In fact, we're even seeing the 1600AF just slip behind the third gen processors with the GTX 1650 Super. And increasing the quality preset to Ultra doesn't really help out the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, we're still looking at similar margins despite a significant change to the actual frame rates. That said, we are now seeing a situation where the performance is mostly limited across the board when using the GTX 1650 Super. Next up we have the World War Z results, and here we find that the 3300X and 3600 along with the 3500X are all comparable in terms of performance with the RTX 2080 Ti and RTX 2070 Super. The 3600 was up to 6% faster, but it's fair to say even with the RTX 2080 Ti, no gamer will be able to spot the difference. Even the 1600AF does very well despite looking slow relative to the 3rd gen Ryzen parts, for example the 3300X was up to 12% faster. However, once again, by the time we drop down to the RTX 2060, there's no difference to be seen and we're now heavily GPU bound. And of course, we see the same thing with the GTX 1650 Super. Increasing the visuals with the ultra quality preset sees very similar margins across the board, so there's nothing really more to report here. Last up we have Borderlands 3, which isn't a very CPU demanding game, but I've included it knowing this as it represents the kind of performance you're going to see in a good number of games that are predominantly GPU bound. Even with the medium quality preset enabled, we're seeing identical performance using the RTX 2070 Super, RTX 2060 and GTX 1650 Super. There is some separation in the numbers with the RTX 2080 Ti, but we're talking about over 150 FPS at all times, even with the 1600 AF. There is a reasonable 10% jump up in 1% low performance from the 3300X to the 3500X, with just a 3% difference when looking at the average frame rate. However, if we enable the ultra quality settings, we see virtually no difference between the CPUs tested, even with the RTX 2080 Ti. And using these settings sees the game become heavily GPU bound, even at 1080p. Finally, here's a look at the average performance across the half dozen games tested. The 3300X and 3500X are quite evenly matched and really aren't that much slower than the 3600, 
But I do expect this to change over the next few years, and we did get a glimpse of what the future will hold with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Anyway, we see that it's really only the 1600 AF that falls away from the pack, most noticeably with the RTX 2080 Ti, and I think it will be very interesting to see how this processor compares to the 3300X and 3500X in a few years' time, given it has more CPU resources. In fact, we're already seeing the 1600AF roughly match them in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and we're not at 100% CPU load yet with the second gen 6 core 12 thread processor. The margins do close up slightly with the ultra quality preset as testing becomes more GPU limited. Obviously the RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p isn't a super realistic test case, and a few people asked for the 4K resolution to be included in the previous video, and yet I went the other way and removed the 1440p results. As I noted earlier, you actually already have the 4K scaling info with the data that's shown here. The RTX 2080 Ti, for example, would be lucky to push 60 FPS at 4K with these quality settings, let alone the 80 FPS we see from the GTX 1650 Super. And given that there's no actual difference in performance between these four CPUs with the GTX 1650 Super, you can very much expect to see the same thing with the 2080 Ti at 4K. Likewise, we saw around a 20% performance drop in the previous test when going from 1080p to 1440p, and we're seeing a similar drop when moving from the RTX 2070 Super to the RTX 2060. So the margins seen with the RTX 2060 will give you a good idea of what the 2070 Super will do at 1440p. Third gen Ryzen really was a big step forward for AMD, but I still think there's a lot of value to be had with the slower second gen parts, such as the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. As we just saw, for a good number of the test configurations, the difference between the 1600 AF and even the Ryzen 5 3600 was quite small, as in less than 10%. So at the current $105 US asking price, I still feel it's a solid buy. Now, if the Ryzen 3 3300X was available at the $120 US MSRP, oh, and quick note, I said the MSRP was $130 US in the previous video, not sure why, I guess they've been out of stock for so long now I forgot what the retail price was meant to be. Anyway, if the 3300X was available at the $120 US MSRP, I'd grab it over the 1600 AF. For just $15 more, you're getting a faster gaming processor with better memory support. But again, it is hard to know how they'll compare in a few years' time, but for now at least, the 3300X is the superior gaming CPU. I'm still not a big fan of the 3500X, just because of the price, and I guess also availability. In terms of CPU resources, it is similar to the 3300X, and it appears that sometimes having six cores, six threads is beneficial, and other times four cores, eight threads yields the best results, but overall they are much the same. The problem I have with the 3500X is, as I've said, the price. Right now you can grab it off AliExpress for $140 US, which is down from the $155 US I paid late last year. At $20 more than the 3300X, it's simply not worth it in my opinion, assuming you could buy the 3300X for $120 US. However, the biggest problem the 3500X faces, at least right now, is the 3600 at $175. Just $35 more for the SMT enabled part seems like the way to go, and as I found last year, that can net you almost 40% more performance in productivity tasks. Also, the 3600 is more readily available at local retailers, and during this global pandemic, Pandemic, it won't take months to arrive. Anyway, as I said last week, if you can afford to step up to the Ryzen 5 3600, then I suggest you do. It's no secret that the 3300X is right on the edge, and while still great value, there is the potential for four core eight thread processors to become problematic down the track, and the same is of course true for six core six thread processors. And that is going to do it for this one. Let me know what other CPUs you'd like to see added to this data, and I'll do my best to include at least one new CPU each week. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, do the youtube -y stuff. Uh, also, we have our Patreon account, so if you'd like to become more involved with the Harbour Unbox channel, then consider joining us over at Patreon. You get access to our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, Patreon Q&A, a few other cool perks. But yeah, if you're interested, links in the video description, worth checking out. But other than that, just thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.